All right, guys, a uh, little watch safari video. Let's do it live this time. I'm in a uh, Yo Mate in, uh, in Hong Kong. And I always tell people, if you can find London watches, you can find this gallery full of uh, watches. There's a Louis Erard uh, regulator. On my wrist, I'm wearing another regulator by uh, Louis Erard. This one is the Constantin Chaikin, the brand new collaboration, Dusk Till Dawn Time Eater with a towed leather uh, strap. Absolutely uh, fascinating. Let's see a bit. Uh, of course, always uh, tons of uh, Rolex. I like this uh, this shop here, PNF uh, Times. Always have uh, interesting uh, things like the uh, Eastern Arabic uh, numeral uh, Bulgari. Here we have uh, 5070, huh? don't mm -hmm. we? Yeah, 5070. Price 560,000 uh, Hong Kong dollar. Divide by 7.8 to get the uh, US dollar rate, uh, 7.8. And this is my, my favorite. And uh, the reason it's so expensive, this one is because it's a uh, Tiffany sign, the uh, 5396, which I like a lot because they keep, they take the same uh, dial layout, very close to the uh, 3448 famous uh, automatic uh, winding uh, perpetual calendar from the vintage uh, catalog of, uh, of Patek and here yeah actually actually I'm, I came here because uh, I was looking back at the, my at my pictures and I found uh, uh, I, for, I, for, I forgot even the, the name of the, the watchmaker but it's a watchmaker who worked for Frank Muller and uh, Muller kind of sponsored him to do his own brand uh, I'll show you in a second maybe uh, 5030 Looks really beautiful. I, I like white on uh, on silver. It's kind of cool, right? With the uh, Roman numerals, one six eight thousand. That's that's good, right? Got the loom. So two thousand three would be a uh, super luminova. One sixty eight for uh, really a special looking. Uh, I think Patek. I prefer the special looking ones. Than the uh, well, you can never call them run of the mill, but and the ones that everybody wants. So the price for the VTNR is really coming off 143. Uh, so it's below the, the Pepsi, uh, actually, even below most of the uh, most of the well, this one is on hold of the CHNR. That's quite good. See over there is a London watch. So if you can find that, it's easy to find. It's a well-known shop. It's on Google. Then you can find the uh, this place. Yeah, too much Rolex really to to stop this shop here. Not really top prices, but hey, there you go. But people seem to call the Paul Newman dial uh, under three hundred. dealers have trouble moving any stock right now let's try to find something a bit more unusual a bit uh, more interesting than uh, than rolex it won't be here It'll be usually at the bottom shelves this shop here always has an amazing uh, collection the, uh, green dial uh, nautilus with the uh, diamonds this one here with the power reserve Asking six ninety-eight. Always some very cool dials. So if you're looking for that special dial, uh, yeah, in this gallery you're gonna find it. New old stock, one one six five two zero two thousand six. I mean, for a new old stock, two two hundred and eight is. Uh, it's not insane, right? It's not insane. New old stock uh, Hurl 208. I mean, if you really, really want it, if that's what you really love, right? If you think that's the, the thing for you. But buying new old stock is, is kind of silly, right? Because you pay uh, a lot more and then you, you can't even wear it. If you open the box, then uh, that's it. It's not any more new old stock. And once you wear it, you lose the extra 40, 50,000 Hong Kong dollar. Uh, nice collection of uh, longer always here. Yeah. 
Dijon as well. And you can have a... I don't know why they even sell these. I mean, that's the best way to get shot by a cop. To, you know, wheel around or something like that. Oh, so this is London watches. There's loads of watches inside, but... Hey, the Cellini. This one, I think, in the future might be sought after. It's kind of a cool cool looking uh, Rolex uh, you know when you see objectively uh, what it what it looks like uh, we'll come back here in a second um, yeah no this shop not really that interesting uh, the one I really wanted to to see which is uh, just across from a uh, we watch there is uh, this one here vintage universal 1954 uh, we'll go inside in a in a second these are the details somebody was asking me about those uh, cool tudor uh, prince date day and uh, this shop has uh, many of them of course you don't want to pay too much because at some point you can get the, the rolex date just of course obviously not with the day but I mean, the day just is going to be still a much better watch. Uh, but, but there you go. There's a wide selection of, uh, of watches. And uh, here you can always find some uh, of those Tudors. This one a bit uh, plain Jane, 13K. And the, the pricing here is, is not really forward looking. So uh, still very reasonable. Oh, I like this. Uh, look at this dial. Cool two-tone. 198 you get a cool yeah this is the uh, reduced speedy reduced don't have to spend that much to have a, a nice watch um, looks like they've sold a few of the Tudors I had seen before I used to have a few here so they, they are popular and uh, when priced around 15k they sell quickly Nice GP. Yeah, my Tudor Prince, you know, I have uh, three of them now. And I won't call it an investment, but it's cool to have. And Maybe if the price goes up to 25,000, 30,000 Hong Kong uh, dollar, then uh, I will uh, let go of one or two and just keep, keep one, you know. Why can I not sometimes make a little bit of a return on uh, my passion, right? Something reasonable. The Flymatic by Omega. And this GP looks really good. I wonder what movement is in it. Uh, maybe a Zenit, actually. Uh, there you go. 39,000. Okay, what I was looking for was not a Chrono Swiss. I think that's a Chrono Swiss. Yeah. It was... What the hell is this? It's a Rolex GMT Master 1675. Look at that. Look at that insane patina. <laughs> and this one turning purple. Very cool. Five five one three pumpkin. Oh that's not a five five one three.
Uh, unfortunately, the watch I had seen last time, it looks like it's gone, it's been sold. If you want a bit of Genta style, Omega. Oh, but it was a double retrograde moon phase in a rose gold around the $55,000 mark. <sighs> yeah, when I saw it a few weeks ago, I didn't really uh, think. I took a video of it. I thought it was cool, but I didn't really think too much of it. And now, uh, yeah, it was a Pierre Kunz. Pierre Kunz is another one. I guess he sold the other one. This one is not so interesting. Most of his watches were quite ugly, but uh, that one was uh, actually quite nice. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, Pierre Kunz uh, was a watchmaker at uh, Frank Mueller and uh, he was encouraged by the brand within the, the brand group to uh, create his own, his own brand, which is uh, great. And he made a perpetual calendar, tourbillon. Perpetual calendar, tourbillon. I'm sorry if I move too fast. Somebody I know is going to say that I'm making them sick, but I'm going a bit uh, gonzo on this one. Uh, usually I try to just focus on something and not move because I've been told before these uh, videos make you, make you sick through an iPhone, but uh, that's, uh, that's what I, uh, I've gone for today. Just go, go live so you can a bit uh, get the vibe of how quickly you can see. Uh, <laughs> look at those. It says full set. Who gives a... That's the one I want actually, the, the yellow one. I really like this dial. Or the blue one, depends what I will find first, but... Yeah, what's the point paying up? I don't even know what the retail... I think retail is 3,000 honky, 4,000. I'm not gonna pay that. I have some self-respect and I wanna buy it from a Swatch. I don't want to... Encourage anyone from... Uh, from scalping and all. Uh, let me show you uh, WeWatch, which has uh, often a great selection, reasonable prices, and some uh, vintage stuff. Oh, Breguet Classic, 39 millimeter, 68,000. Look at the case, coin edged. All right, that's wicked. Next, the one next to it, 66,000 with a guillotine on the dial. And some smaller ones. I mean, 29 millimeters is perfect. You get a nice case. Wow. I see lots of those, you know, they're coming out of the, uh, the vaults. 37 millimeter VC overseas. And uh, yeah, let's not get too excited. The only PAM I like is the uh, 977, which is very peculiar, of course. It's a sort of a brushed steel color dial. Uh, it's not for everybody, but it's the one that I like because it's, it's different. Sort of a bezel turn, almost red burgundy, 16800. The vintage market of Rolex hasn't moved for years and years, you know. It's just uh, languishing in the, in the dealer's windows, trying to focus on something interesting, but pff, a lot of Tudors, Panerai. I'm not going to start uh, delving into Panerai, it's just uh, too complicated. Uh, I love them all, they all look great, actually, uh, I think, but uh, to choose one, uh, it's tough when there's so many. Okay, these are great, 34 millimeters. 
but uh, oh, that green is great. If you have a small wrist or if you're a lady looking for a good value, I mean 48,000, it's great. Cool GMT Master 2, 1675. I've tried, you know, I've tried to get, choose one of those, but again, there's just so many and you don't know sometimes what you're buying. Look at that ingenieur there, 42 millimeter. 34,000 with the chronograph. Uh, well, a couple more shops. Someone was asking uh, where to find uh, Seiko, and uh, they know about the shop called uh, Watch Out in uh, Jordan, so it's not far from here. So, Jordan Station, uh, Watch Out with a Z at the end, Outs. Uh, they are specialists in, uh, in Seiko, and uh, you find really unusual uh, models. Uh, there's another shop here I can show you. Look at the wall of uh, perhaps new old stock, I'm not sure. This is a really good value if you have a big wrist for it. The 126600 Sea Dweller. Nobody wants them anymore here. Uh, full gold, that's nice. Uh, but this shop, these shops are expensive. This shop here is just full. Uh, it's a Rolex monkey. Uh, this is more of a speedy shop, but I don't know. They've just removed all the watches from the window. Too bad. Usually they have an Alaska project. And uh, yeah, the shop here on the corner has Seiko. There used to be two shops, but I think this one took over the stock of the uh, the other one. But they're, they're very unfriendly, so I wouldn't really recommend you to go in there unless you really, really, really need to have a, a one, one of the models. Like the animal dial. Or for example, uh, the, uh, my favorite, one of my favorites, the, uh, the Shogun. This is the original uh, one that says uh, automatic. And this is the one after that's with the Prospects logo. It's really ugly. And the bezel, I think I've had this one in my hand. Bezel is not that good uh, on it, but there you go. Full original uh, with the automatic scuba, which is cool, right? It's much cooler than the uh, Prospects automatic. Uh, I mean, don't expect perfection, right? Those are... You know, building factories, uh, they usually misaligned. in this dial probably limited edition maybe Ginza or something let me know in the comments the, the reference there's nothing indicated here yeah, a few uh, a few nice dials right that's the one I had oh, these two are cool that I've never seen either from Marine Masters. What is that? Maybe something for South Africa? <laughs> Let me know, Seiko, Seiko fans. What are these? That's a cool, that could be a thumbnail, thumbnail for the, the video. slow down and uh, show you a bit more and get some uh, quirky Tudor yeah there was another shop here but it didn't survive I think they passed some of the, the stocks to the other shop 
And uh, the last uh, shop I'm going to show you now is uh, vintage timepieces. Right when you get to uh, Yingsheng Street, there you go. Uh, T20. Nothing really interesting. So there you go, guys. Another. Oh, there you go. The original uh, Nevada French and uh, Depth Master. Well, I guess we're going to say goodbye on this one. I hope uh, you enjoy this little snippet of uh, what shopping in Hong Kong. Say goodbye, monster. Bye-bye.